Okay, Jim, you ready? So I look up to this guy, point the weapon, and I'm like, yo, what am I supposed to do? Bro, shoot it. How? Push the trigger. Oh, I'm really about to do this. What if someone hears me and I get in trouble? Jim, shoot. So with no hesitation, I close my eyes. You remember being a kid? Yeah, ain't nothing like it. The world belongs to you. And thinking back, what's the one thing every boy wants as a kid? A toy gun. <laughs> Man, I spent years begging my parents to buy me a toy gun. And guess what, my guy? Never happened. See, my mom didn't believe in having weapons in the house. See, in her mind, giving a child a toy gun helped enable a child to use a gun when they grow up, which is understandable because we've all seen situations where a kid finds a real gun in the household and accidentally shoots another kid, all while thinking the gun was a toy. But it's like they say, people want what they can't have. That's why during teenage years, kids go from playing with toy guns to playing video games with real weapons, which we all know has led to many people to believe there's a direct correlation between video games and violence, especially war games like Call of Duty or action games like Grand Theft Auto, which seem to glorify the use of violence. Now, I grew up in the South, right? And there's one thing the South is known for, it's for having guns. In America, the Second Amendment gives all the Americans the right to keep and bear arms. And believe me, the South is all about that smoke. Fam, if you break in somebody's house, you best believe that's your ass. Now the problem is, there's too many guns. And to top it off, people now have assault weapons. And it's easily accessible. Now in case you don't know, the term assault weapon refers primarily to semi-automatic rifles, pistols, and shotguns that are able to accept detachable magazines and possesses one or more other features. And to keep it short, America is all about that life. So for this story, I'ma take you back, back to my preteen years. So one day I was chilling at my homie Phil's house playing 007 Golden Eye on the N64. Now my homie Phil was my next door neighbor since elementary school and we've been homies for a minute. But halfway during the gameplay, Phil was like, yo Tim, you wanna see something special? Special? What you mean special? Now when a man say they wanna show you something special, mm, mm, let's just say homie don't play that. So Phil stops the game and is like, just follow me kid. So we put the controllers down and go to Phil's parents' room. So we get in and Phil gets a metal box from under the bed. And he's like, you wanna hold it? Hold what? So Phil hands me the box, I look at it, open it, and there it was. Woo! A nine millimeter Heckler and Koch P2000 handgun. Damn, fam, what's this? A strap, fool? Yeah, but what am I supposed to do with it? Pick it up. No, I can't lie. Oh, shook. See, this was my first time seeing a real gun in real person. Better yet, touching one. So I didn't know what to do with it. But not for my guy, Phil. See, Phil's dad had a large collection of weapons, which he kept in his room. Like I said, they from the South. Yo, Phil, I don't think we should be doing this. Just relax, kid. I'll show you what to do with it. Fam, don't point that gun at me, bro. Don't worry, kid. It's not loaded. Now here comes where it all went down. See, Phil came up with a brilliant idea. See, this was the July 4th weekend. And if you know anything about the 4th weekend, people go outside and blow fireworks as a celebration of America's independence. So Phil's great idea was for us to go outside and shoot down some birds. Now to our advantage, no one would notice it because they're just thinking some fireworks. Now, first of all, I'm no animal killer. Sure, I'm all about that burger life, but fam, I've never understood the concept of killing animals for sport. That's just not me. So we get to the backyard and Phil starts loading the gun. Now in case you're wondering, Phil already knew how to operate the weapon. See, in the South, parents teach their kids at an early age on how to shoot. Why? I don't know, but that's just how it is. So Phil loads the gun and hands it to me. Okay, Tim, you ready? So I look up to the sky, point the weapon, and I'm like, yo, what am I supposed to do? Bro, shoot it. How? Push the trigger. Oh, I'm really about to do this. 
What if someone hears me and I get in trouble? Jim, shoot! So with no hesitation, I closed my eyes like a bitch and pushed the trigger. Damn, Tim, you shook for real. You never shot before? Um, no. Here, I'll show you. So Phil takes the gun, holds it, looks deep in the sky, and lets it rip. Damn, Phil, that was dope, okay. So we get done shooting, get back to the crib, put the strap under the bed, and get back to playing 007. So a few minutes go by, and we hear a knock at the door. Now, just like usual, black kids don't open the door for a stranger. You're supposed to peek outside to see who it is. So we get to the door, look outside, and it's the ops, my G. Damn. Yo, it's the ops. See, here's the problem. See, while shooting up in the air, somebody must have heard the gunshots and was able to differentiate a gunshot from a firework sound, thereby calling the police. Oh, shh. What do we do? We? Fam, didn't I tell you not to play with that strap? Now, my God, I'm going to ask you one more time. What would you do? See, this wasn't my house, and I damn sure wasn't going to get in trouble for something I didn't want to do in the first place, so I was like, yo, Phil, I'm about to dip. What? Fam, you on your own on this one. So I get to the back door, open it, go outside, jump the fence into my backyard, and got to my room. So I get to the window, look outside, and see Phil talking to the police. Damn, I hope Phil don't snitch on me. I'm gonna be dead if he does. So a few more minutes go by, and I see the police enter the house. Now I'm really tripping because I think my man feels done for. So a few more minutes go by, and then the police officer leaves the premises. Hold oh, uh up. -huh. Phil came out clean, no way. So I get outside, knock on Phil's door, he opens it. Yo fam, did you get away with it? Did I? Now according to Phil, the cop went in the house, he showed him the fireworks, and told him the noise came from him just firing the fireworks. So the cop looked around the house, and everything looked fine to him, and he left. Now that's what I knew. My man Phil was a savage. So moral of the story. Each time you make a choice, you're also choosing the consequences. But that's not the end of the story, fam. See, Phil might have been able to fool the cops, but the cops made a call to his parents, and hoo-hoo, you can't fool your parents, my guy. So let's just say my man Phil got his ass whooped. What's up, world? Thank you for joining your boy for another video. This week's video was all about being careful with your decisions because your actions lead to your consequences. Now let's get straight to the shout outs. This week's first shout out goes to my guy, Splishy Boy. What's up, homie? My man's an artist. Okay, follow my guy on IG as Splishy Boy and on YouTube as Splishy World. Keep doing your thing, young king. Second shout out goes to the homie, Priganova. What's up, my J? Okay, we got another artist in the building. Follow my guy, Noah, on IG as Prigga underscore Noah. Keep doing your thing, bro. And last shout out goes to Mukoya Herman. What's up? AKA Mr. King for Life. Well, keep doing your thing, young king. Follow my guy on IG as King Miguel Life. Keep shining, bro. If you want a chance to win a shout out, subscribe to the channel, follow your boy on IG, and send me that screenshot. As always, live timeless.